is really mm. weird. The fine. I mean, I mean, some of the finest moments in our show's history have involved like <laughs> dick pics, stories about virtual dicks and Dragon Age mods. <laughs> it's, Oh, God. Are we going to become the dick show? I don't want to be the dick show. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think our content in its other finest moments is a bit too, uh, a bit too high level to be known as the dick show. But it, the I fact don't that know. We, the, fact, the fact that we have that type of range, right, that we can talk about, like, real emotional resonance in digital relationships and dick pics in the same episode, mind you. <laughs> hey, you know... <laughs> If that's who we are, that's just what happens. <laughs> uh, All right. Um, so uh, I, I exact- think we should probably go with the weird sex first, right? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, let's go weird sex cult. Um, <laughs> this is probably going to be the cold intro, and everyone's gonna be like, "What the fuck?" Uh, well, I do have if if we if we vamp for like another minute or two, I did uh, I did finally drop the the Andromeda fan fiction. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. I I haven't gotten ready yet because I've just been so busy. I didn't even have a video come out Thursday. You've been super busy. <laughs> I like, know. You were in the trenches. I saw your Twitter and I'm like, Katie, it's okay. Breathe. It's I okay. Know. You release, and I'm sitting here going like, you release lots of videos. It's fine if you miss a day. I barely <laughs> release any videos. Yeah, Jordan, get on. With it. Let's bring this back on to you now. Have it be a you you therapy session. Oh if anybody should be apologizing for lack of videos, it should be me. <laughs> I've just been so busy. I just can't do it. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, let's actually start the episode and do things that are productive. Um, so this week I got a PM from on Reddit from, let me pull it up, Keiko11, who says, Hey Gil, sex and nudity and games have been brought up twice in one week on the Dragon Age subreddit. I know you two talked about this a little in a romance video, but the subject was more about the appropriateness of it or how it can be used to enhance the story. Both posts go a lot of passionate responses from people on both sides. It might be something you and Jordan should talk about. I botched that last line, but that's okay. Um, So what they are referring to is there was one post called Importance of Sexual Content in Dragon Age 4 by Luke Strain, and then another one titled We Have to Talk About Sex by McCollin, I think it's going to be pronounced. And just both kind of go into... One is kind of not really into whole sexual and nudity fact in Dragon Age games and wish there was less of it, which I have a rant about that later. And then the other one was saying we need more of it. So uh, where do we fall on the line? What do people think about sexual content? Yeah, sexual content and nudity. And that's today's topic. So I saw the one that was asking for, I mean, what I essentially took it as is they wanted more fidelity in the sex scenes. They kind of made reference to the way that Witcher 3 handles their sex scenes, and they they seem to be a fan of those. And I I saw this topic, and I almost wrote out like a really lengthy response. I kind of got halfway through like a really detailed response on Reddit, and then I kind of I told you this over email. I'm just like, why am I putting this content out here? And so it's a good thing that you decided that we should maybe talk about this on the show, because... Um, I was I was surprised at the at the, my reaction in the, in the direction that I that I was going because my gut level reaction to to the response of, of like this person saying that oh, we really need to have like way better sex scenes was almost just like well, why don't we don't have sex scenes like how about that like how about, <laughs> how about instead of like if they're not so great and like th- instead of putting all this time into making better sex scenes like. Maybe maybe this has gone the wrong way, I guess is what my initial reaction was. Like, if, if this is the discussion that we're having now of, like, the quality, really of the aesthetic quality of the sex scenes. I mean, they made reference to the importance of the sex scene within the, the narrative of a romance, of an interactive romance. But they were really harping on, like, they wanted to look sexy, like they wanted to look good. And mm-hmm. my my thing was just, like, if that's the point we're at... Maybe this topic is indicative of the fact that we may have missed the point. And worse, we may have missed the point in the worst way possible. We may have missed the point in exactly the way that some people on Fox News accused us of missing the point when the Mass Effect side boob thing came out, which is like, this is a video game which rewards you with a sex scene. Right? This is game plus do the right thing in the game plus reward a sex scene. And so there was my, my gut level reaction was just like, well, maybe maybe we've gone too far with the romance thing. Like maybe we're maybe we either shouldn't do romances or we shouldn't do romances without or we should do romances without sex scenes. 
I didn't have time to fully flesh that out, which is, I guess, why I'm glad we're talking about it now. And, like, feel free to poke holes in, in my logic here, but that was my gut level reaction was just, like, this feels like the the aim is in the wrong direction if this is what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. I guess my question to that is: it, Is it based on morality then? Is is what based on morality? Like your your feelings of like um, like Fox News. They're at least what I think of Fox News from the time I know of it. It's kind of like based in the morality. Like we shouldn't have sex in video games because the kids are playing it and whatever. I I didn't know if like yours was maybe maybe not quite that but in that direction or more in the direction of like game like the game isn't about sex why are we focusing on the sex so that's a very good question and that's actually a, that's actually i'm not even just saying that uh, offhandedly that is in fact a very good question because you need to distinguish that and i think either argument could be considered legitimate um mine's not really a moral argument at least not on the surface i don't think it is um, mm-hmm. Mine is more about the integrity of uh, of the medium as a narrative quality. Mm-hmm. So again, like, let me try and see if I can parse through this because I feel like this is like a really fundamental point I'm trying to make. But to to me, games are, or at least they have the potential to be the preeminent storytelling medium because of agency. Whereas normally, and I talked about this on a couple of other episodes, like, whereas normally you glean meaning of a story through empathy, in video games you can gain it through empathy and agency. Um, So that's really important from a narrative standpoint. I think it's important to do romances from that perspective within a narrative. And if that were true... The aesthetic quality of the actual sex scene shouldn't really impact that. I mean, like, if you had a really well-written, really well-acted and constructed romantic subplot um, with interesting elements of agency throughout it, and then the sex scene was sort of ho-hum, I'm not really sure why a person would feel like they were shortchanged unless they were specifically motivated by some sort of aesthetic showing of, of a sex scene that's meant to be titillating to them and that's just like the most important they are one of the most important things to them so i'm not sure how someone could feel that that's a detraction i don't know if that's a moral argument i guess maybe and maybe in some sense underneath it is but my my chief concern would be are we treating the potential of romantic interactive narrative with agency in video games As narrative, whereas if you're treating it chiefly as gameplay, so to speak, um, with a cool sort of aesthetic reward, which is the sex scene, it at that point it really does start to become about making the right dialogue choices, playing the game the right way in order to get the sex scene. I guess long story short is like if it's about the end point as opposed to the journey. That to me is oh, that's getting way too close to the criticisms people have made of a long time of like ah oh, Bioware fans just care about this how many aliens can I have sex with? Okay, so it's kind of like <clears throat> um oh what do people call them? I forget. Fuck boys. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, the um, the Very like put. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that's what they do anyway. But um, there's like this notion that perhaps video games have caused, or it's modern society, or whatever, um, a, like a section of men to think that if I do X, Y, and Z correctly and follow the book, I am like I deserve sex, and that you think that this could probably like it, it's kind of like that line of thinking. That's actually that's actually an interesting point that I actually hadn't thought about it from from the ramifications of like people's thinking in real life. I was really just thinking of it as like it's it, it is essentially dumbing down is too strong a word. It's putting the wrong mm-hmm. focus within a narrative that that potentially could be really complex and really transformative like we talked about in our in our romance episode. There's yeah. so much potential to do amazing things from a narrative standpoint. Um that it really almost shouldn't matter what the sex scene looks like. You do bring up a good point, though. I mean, that's that's a really interesting subconscious thing that could be happening where you, where you talk about fuck boys and like X, Y, Z equals I get to have sex with someone. Um, I mean, that if in any way that th- that was an unintended consequence, that's a really bad unintended consequence. Which I think we've even talked about this before. So for repeating ourselves, I apologize. But uh, so I, your argument to me kind of just sounds like... 
there are porn, like, you don't want it to become a porn game. Like, porn game is just to titillate and to, like, you get to that ending part and, like, feel satisfied, if you know what I mean. Like, the, whereas kind of the romance, there's, like, that build up and then it's, the, the satisfaction is in, like, the romance and, like, finding companionship and whatnot. Where, like, w- you think that this guy is just saying, like, we want, you know, we want press A to pound. We want the, we want the... The, the big bang at the end type of thing. In, a, in some sense, yeah. Like, I, I think one one thing when you say, like, I don't want it to become a porn game, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, you, you're right in some sense. You, you've got the right idea, but I'll use an example that's maybe people won't uh, think of as such an exaggeration, right? Because I don't think that they're, they're going to get, uh, Bioware at least, I don't know about other game companies, I think Bioware won't get too close to a porn game, but a movie that comes to mind, uh, which was a phenomenal film, it won the Palme d'Or um, a couple years ago, which is like the, the best in show at the Cannes Film Festival, mm-hmm. um, was Blue is the Warmest Color. I don't know if you ever saw it. No. Brilliant, brilliant film about a young girl who's like what if she's like 18 something like that she's discovering her sexuality discovering the fact that she's a lesbian she gets into a relationship with a girl who's slightly older maybe a few years older um one of the best films on relationships period gay straight doesn't matter they have a phenomenal scene where spoiler alert they the relationship on and off thing and at one point when they're broken up they have this amazing scene at a coffee shop where it's the first time they've spoken in months after breaking up and i swear to god anyone who's ever had that conversation with an ex they both sit down at that table and there's that moment of silence where I'm just like, I don't know how they did it, but they just captured the emotions of countless people who have had that moment. Like they just nailed it. Beautiful, beautiful, naturalistically shot. It's it's a French film and I just feel like the French understand really naturalistic cinematography and dialogue. I absolutely loved it. I told everybody about it. The, the reason why... I, that film is known most of the time when you talk to people about it is they go, oh, it's a lesbian sex scene movie because they show very naturalistically. I don't even think it's gratuitous or or over the top, essentially. Like they show very passionate sex in that, right? Like especially at the beginning of a relationship, like that's something that was a key part of their of their uh, relationship. And so and I'll admit the sex scene one in particular is a is a pretty long sex scene. By, by cinema standards. Like, it was longer than I expected it to be. I was like, oh, this is really going on quite a bit. <laughs> the, my my real, like, issue with that is as much as I liked the fact that they were just trying to show a relationship as it is, which includes passionate sex, the problem is everybody thinks of that movie as the lesbian sex movie now. And it is an astonishing work of art. I mean, I'm not even kidding you. Like, if anybody hasn't seen that movie, go out and watch that movie. Not because of the lesbian sex scene, but because it's incredibly impactful and emotional and an earnest look at relationships at their best and worst. And I hate the fact that it's known as a lesbian sex movie. It annoys the crap out of me every time I, I mention it to someone. And they go, oh, yeah, I haven't seen that. I heard there's that crazy lesbian sex scene in it. And it's like, oh, Jesus, man. Like, I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies of, like, the last 10 years. Um, that's kind of more what I'm getting at with Bioware. Like, is, are we going to run into, like, Bioware's going to have this incredible romance, you know, whatever. Like, maybe in the next game, the soulless romance is just going to be just, you know, incredible. And then people are going to talk about the elf sex scene. Well, one, a lot of people just screamed, yes, I don't care about that because I'm just so this. <laughs> but two, like, okay, yeah, I get you. Like, it's it's less about it actually being a porn game, but more like it being known as the porn game. Right, exactly. Okay, okay. So you're you're more worried about the, the reputation of Dragon Age then. Or I guess Mass Effect 2, whatever, whatever yeah. it is. Either way. But, okay. I guess my immediate reaction with it was... No, you know, like, <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> like, they, uh, so there was, there was two posts. One of them was the one we were talking about, and the other one was the um, we need less sex scenes one. And uh, with the one that we're currently talking about, like, the the top-rated post, see if I can pull it up again, was by Wraith Fighter, and they essentially just say, like, the thing to remember about sex scenes is, well, the same question that's in the center of every non-sex scene, what is the scene about? And then they go on to say that, like, 
if it would the should only have sex scenes if it makes sense in the context and if it really takes away from the story then it shouldn't be there at all because then it's just useless and doesn't matter which is perhaps why the uh dragon age origins ones just felt so awkward because it was just like let's sing and rub each other as we are in our underwear and it's really awkward <laughs> <laughs> So, but, but like, um, and the, the scenes and in Inquisition, all of the nudity, for the most part, had a purpose. Like, um, Blackwall, he left, like, it, him leaving, so in Blackwall's romance, you see the Inquisitor just straight up naked in a barn. That kind of highlights the fact that he left you alone after sex, completely naked in a barn outside of your fortress. What? That's, that's, that's huge. The, the yeah. nakedness is like this vulnerability. And then you got the Cassandra romance, where you that both of them are naked, lying after sex, and they have like this very raw and like intense conversation. She's giving like she has given her body to the Inquisitor, and she's now giving like her thoughts and her emotions. It's this very like closeness. There's that. Then you got the Sarah romance. Why do I know all of the sex scenes by heart? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Sarah romance, and it's just the two of them having fun, and it's like this playful scene, and it's essentially it's the Inquisitor trying to say, like, I tried to get you something, and I didn't know what it was, and she's like, no, it was perfect. You are perfect. Everything is perfect. You shaved your pubes a funny thing. Ha ha. And then they just go on and have fun. <laughs> like, they, 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 there are these, like, despite everything weird about the romance, there are, like, these moments of intimacy, Then there's these moments of closeness. So it's... And then there's the Iron Bull, in which that one's just pure comedy. But, like, for the most part, like, they all have a very distinct purpose. And then you got ones like Josephine and Solis that don't even have sex scenes. And I think they're, like, fine without it. So it's... I, I think Inquisition probably did it perfectly. And if they do it again in the next game, that's great. Like, some nudity is fine. Just make it make sense to the character and... That's all I'm asking for. Now, let's say for whatever reason, well, actually, Andromeda is a good thing, a uh, good example for this, but um, the Korra sex scene. Well, you romance Korra, right? I did. And the Korra sex scene aesthetically is the best one that they've ever done, as far as I'm concerned. I think it's yeah. the one that comes closest to what this person was talking about. Yeah, that is an intense, like, sex scene. And, like, which the lip animation on that scene is probably the best lip animation in the entire game. Like, they generally mm -hmm. look like they're kissing, which, you, <laughs> it makes me laugh. That, And I would also say Jaws was really well animated as well. But, like, those two scenes are probably the best animated scenes in the game. Not, not you only know that, that Korra's, uh, kissing Korra might be the best animated kiss in a video game ever. I, I don't know much about kissing games, but, like, it was generally really good. <laughs> Even in The Witcher 3, I don't know if they got it quite that good. So it's just, like, did they spend, like, how many X more time did they spend on that one scene than, like, Addison's facial animations? I don't, I don't, I don't want to be that person that talks about Andromeda facial animations, but clearly we know where the focus was. <laughs> oh, by the way, we have to re-erase the times we've spent talking about Andromeda back to zero. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> God damn it! Every time. <laughs> anyway, so I, 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 for pretty much, I agree with Wraith Fighter. Like, as long as they do it well, like, okay, whatever. But like, I, I think like you, yeah, I wouldn't want a game to just be full of like non, like, just no point, and then it becomes the sex game. You know, press A to pound. Like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> That I th I think that would like there is, there is that integrity there now. Now something I did want to bring up is why why is it should we be thinking about like the integrity of the game? Why is it negative to have sex? And, and like there's there's that kind of whole uh, I don't know, movement going on like sex being sex positive or whatever like oh well you know, shouldn't ruin the integrity of the whole game if there's like a sex scene in there you know like yeah okay no it shouldn't ruin the integrity of the game but like our society just isn't there yet and like yeah you know you could say that you know going forward like be the change you want to be in the world want to see in the world and all that stuff but like i i i don't know like it's america has a weird society where we're okay with a bunch of violence but show a dick and god mm, forbid right. <laughs> So 
like, you know, we, it, which even then, Inquisition isn't that violent. Like, Origins, you could chop off someone's head. Right. But, like, uh, the Inquisition, not so much. But even if they bring all the violence back, like, I don't know, like, full frontal nudity. Like, it's not, like, w- which, side note, very few people, I think, want to see the dick. Like, <laughs> I, like, I'm a straight woman. I don't want to see the dick. <laughs> yeah, but it's a vocal minority. <laughs> I know, that's true. It's like, you're right, there's probably not many people that want to see the dick, but the ones that want to see it are like, you know, they're marching down whatever the name of the street is where Bioware's headquarters is. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just, I'm I'm sorry, everyone with the dick. I'm sorry, Jordan. They're ugly. It's just ugly. I agree with you. As, as a, <laughs> as a uh, dick owner, I, I can concur with that. <laughs> it's just not, oh my God. Okay, hold on. I suddenly remembered something I wanted to bring up. Okay, so uh, they actually, uh, uh, there is a, um, oh, oh God, what's for it a called? Sp- for a split second, I was going to be like, don't tell me someone actually sent you a dick pic. <laughs> no, oh, God, no. I would be so angry. <laughs> don't tell me someone actually sent me a dick pic. Like, low-key, I wouldn't look at it, but I'd be a little bit proud. <laughs> Please don't do that because they have to send it to me first. I, would, I, don't I wouldn't look at it, but I would tell my girlfriend, like, babe, you won't believe this. Some dude sent me a dick pic because he liked a podcast. <laughs> oh, God. But, but the more we talk about it, that raises the chance that you're right, you're right. This is, Look, if anybody thinks I'm being serious, fuck you. <laughs> no, they don't. They probably know you're not serious. They just take it as a challenge. <laughs> Anyway, there was an interview with I think it's Matt Rhodes. I, I, there's anyway, it's it's the lead artist of Inquisition, and he talks about the story of how they actually sat there and modeled Iron Bull's penis, <laughs> and then like it, it the, the 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 basics of the story is that they just said like ah fuck it, let's give him a penis, and like there was some guy out there whose sole job for buyer well maybe not the sole job but like for like a couple weeks their job was to like detail and paint and sculpt a penis for Iron Bull. <laughs> and he did it and they had like critiques on it. Like, oh, it needs to lean more that way. And that's the whole story. But at the very <laughs> end, like the boss is like, wait, we can't ship a game with a penis. What the fuck? And then they deleted it. It's whatever. But if you use Flycam. Oh, <laughs> uh, is it uh, on there? Uh, not really. So it's, um, if you, if you, I, I think what happened is, is that they modeled all of Iron Bull with the penis attached to it. So when they decided to nix the penis, what they <laughs> did is that they added a black box where the penis is. Sure. So if you, if you, in, in scenes where an Iron Bull is naked, if you kind of zoom out, there is just this hilarious elongated black box on his crotch. Oh, wow. <laughs> Now, what I did on, it wasn't really a bet. It wasn't really a dare. It was me being, I don't know why. I was like, well, with textures and in Inquisition, they're like, it's like paper. Once you break through the other side, you can see what's 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 through there. Mm-hmm. And what I did is I took the fly cam and I went into the black box. I was like, did they put, like, did they keep the penis? And then they just put the black box over it so then you could see it? Or like, what happened? Mm-hmm. So there I go. I zoom into it. They didn't keep the penis, but I think why they added the box is that they just kind of slice it in half. So there was just this hole in the model of Brub <laughs> Iron Bull of where the penis used to be. Gotcha. And like I'm, it's it's been a while, but I'm like fifty. No, I was more than that. Probably like seventy percent sure that they kept the pubes on Iron Bull. <laughs> so technically, <laughs> Iron Bull is the only person to have pubes modeled on his crotch area, but it's covered with a black box. I mean, you have to imagine uh, uh, the carefulness in something like that. Like, first of all, that's a hilarious story that they that they went through all that to, like, model mm-hmm. the penis. And then I wonder if that I wonder if that guy was slightly disappointed the day they decided to cut his content from the game. <laughs> He's just like, I spent so long working on this penis. The way Matt Rhodes tells the story, I, I'm pretty sure it's Matt Rhodes. He tells the story. It's... Uh, it kind of sounded like they were, like, hazing the artist. Like, he was kind of a newbie. And, like, so it just kind of, like, <laughs> what are you thinking? We can't ship a game with a penis. Why'd you do all this work? But, like, he was the one pushing him. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it, go look it up. It's funny. That's it. But I, I do, on, like, on a, on a, I wonder if someone at EA or at Bioware was cognizant of the fact that, like, um, you, you even reference like the press A to bang and all that stuff. The most infamous sex, uh, depiction in any video game ever has to be the hot coffee, um, in, was it San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto? Yeah. So many people forget 
they did not ship the game with that on there. Well, I'm sorry. They did not ship that. They did not ship the game with that being accessible. You actually had to mod a PS2 game, which at the time was not easy. Um, that content was on the disc, but it was not to be accessible. Like people found that that was there. Um, that was something that developers made. Said there's no way we can ship this, and so they deleted the parts of the game that allowed you to access it. But the content, the data, was still on the disc, and they ended up getting in massive trouble for that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, like, just like I've a side thought. That. Like I remember, I thought of uh, Bioware being like, "Huh, we better put this black box over his dick." That <laughs> reminds me of the um. Oh, it's one of those David Cage games. It's not Heavy Rain. It's the one with Ellen Page. Beyond Two Souls. Um, they got in a lot of trouble because they took Ellen Page and she does the mocap suit for like the majority of the game as the main character. And in it, there's a couple like shower scenes. And um, what they did though is that they just modeled her body completely naked and she, like Ellen Page got upset about that and they're like in development like oh no 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 don't worry people won't be able to see like you know the nipples and everything and she's like okay whatever well it's a game you can mod it to zoom out and see the whole body naked so essentially like even though it wasn't her full like it wasn't her body so to speak like you could see Ellen Page's head on a naked body and I think she might have even sued them like she was very upset about it and rightfully so so like it's it's one of those things that like for the dawn of time in video games, it seems like if there is a way to see or do the sex or the nudity, people go and do it. <laughs> like that mod in for Origins, where it's called Natural Bodies, and like you just if you want to mod an erect penis for all those weird, it's the most unnatural body ever. It's just like it's like permanently erect penis. <laughs> yeah, well like, they, they they also had one later out where it's an unerect penis. So oh, if you want to like change it in between, you could do that. <laughs> This is like program a macro to like like a little auto script that changes oh, no. it. Oh no! <laughs> Good lord! I mean, the fact that somebody the fact that somebody made a dick mod and then had enough response on their dick mod of people going like, "Could we have some flaccid like a flaccid version, like a version two point b? Like, could we get?" <laughs> and then they made the second version. I'm just like, what kind of world are we living in? You know, in a way, I respect that because like someone. Jordan, someone sat there and was like, I love this game so much out of the, like the generosity of my own heart and just something I want to do. I'm going to load up Blender. I'm going to learn how to mod and I'm going to sculpt a penis on an elf, a dwarf, and a human male and female. There's the, there's those two. Like it's, it's someone sat there and did that. And God bless him. America's great. Like, you know, or whatever they're from is great. Like, I just find it so fascinating that someone sat there and was like, I just really want a dick on this guy. And then they made it. I don't, the, I don't internet, know. Like, I mean, on, on some sense, right, even as you were telling the Matt Rhodes story, like I was thinking about it, like I, I now have a mod out for Mass Effect Andromeda where I recolored one of the rifles in the game. And like, you're right, like there's a whole process of like turning the model and like redoing the texture and then redoing the texture again. Like I spent a lot of time looking at the Raptor rifle in, for Mass Effect Andromeda, like I just can't imagine doing that with a dick. <laughs> it's like rotating it, zooming in, looking at it from different angles. Like, hmm, is it is it right just yet? So, like somebody just really wanted it, and they did it. You know, I can I can respect that. Fine, but I I I guess going back to the original topic is if if they should do it for Dragon Age, I I think that one our society would. It, it would be known as the sex game. Like, if, if you really want to make a game where you really get into the gratuity of it, like, it's, you're, you're going to kind of cheapen it. And I know some people are going to be like, well, you know, we should try to do it anyway. But, like, I just don't think our society's there yet. And then, two, should we is a really complicated subject because it goes into the morality of it. Like, I don't think we should because, like, I think that, like... This is going into my own personal beliefs, which I don't know if we should be talking about this on the show. But like, I, I like I'm with. It's the only thing you we should bit. be talking about. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, that's the only thing that we can definitely say for certain. Like, I, I come, I do come from a Christian background. Like, but I'm not very shy about sex at all. Hence, we're talking about it. Um, but like, you know, like I just the the sexuality for me, I think it's just better kept 
in your mind. Because no matter, like at least in my perspective, whatever they come up with is going to disappoint you. Whatever exciting fantasies in your head is going to be a lot better than what they come up with. Like, I don't, my God, Jordan, have you, <laughs> have you read or seen all the shit they do to poor Solus and his sexuality? <laughs> They're like, there is a fan fiction under the sun for every type of sexuality imaginable. Like, within, I, I don't mean just, like, gay, straight, or bi. I mean, like, sub, dom, like, those beta, alpha, omega thing. If you don't know what that is, don't even look it up. Like, it no, is no, so no. crazy it goes, it goes way even beyond that. I mean, like, nugs, okay? That's all I'm going to say. I, okay. like, yeah, which, like, if you're, you know, writing this stuff, writing this stuff, reading this, enjoying it, that's fine. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that, like... Isn't it better to have that question that you get to fill and, like, have this community and, like, be like, oh, what if, what if, what if? Like, there's that mystery there that's a lot more interesting than if they just did the va- – because, let's be honest, if Solas had a sex scene, it would be a very vanilla, like – uh, I, I don't think, like, everyone wants to picture him as this, like, giant sex god, but no, he's, it was probably just gonna be very vanilla, and that's it. Like, it, it would be very boring, and you wouldn't have this mystery and this, like, community around it. Like, that, I, I think that having that, like, fade to black just adds a lot more that the people that really want the sex scenes actually get, probably get more out of the fade to black than the just showing it. That That is a really interesting point, because I think there's something to be said for the fact that, like, staying true to the character and doing that sex scene once you have a quote-unquote canon version of their sexuality or their sexual proclivities and things like that it does kind of dash all the other stuff which maybe those people in those communities wouldn't mind like they already knew it was just sort of like their heightened fantasy of what that character was Mm -hmm. anyway and they might keep it but i think that's a very interesting point to say that like let's leave that since people do have this personal attachment to their romantic subplots in the game, let's leave even the details of it to their imagination. And maybe maybe ultimately people are more satisfied with that. Whereas you might, if you happen to depict it in exactly the way that certain people want, they'll be really satisf- satisfied and everyone else won't. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting point. I like the fact that you brought up morality. I like it because it's absolutely, like I said, it, it is absolutely a question that should be asked i don't believe in the even with so much of the movement in our society towards sex positive which like i might be as much in favor of that as i am anything else because i don't think prudishness is is valuable i don't think puritanical views are valuable i think that Mm -hmm. those things stifle people um to the point where the backlash can be worse than just a healthy acceptance of sexuality, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. right? Everybody, and and you can probably speak to this more clinically than I can, but like repression is never a good thing, right? Like people like tamping down something that's in some ways very natural is sort of like that's, that's bound to backfire. So in some sense, I might be as sex positive as the next person, but it doesn't make sense to not ask the question. It yeah. Does it make sense to go into it carelessly and to, and to sort of not ask the question of what is the appropriate role of sexual depictions in our media? You should be mindful of that. And mm-hmm. it's in it's in no way, uh, at least in my opinion, I understand some people might not like this, but like it's it's not in any way more liberal or progressive thinking to just say, oh, well, it's just it doesn't matter. Anything goes and we don't even have to think about it. Like, no, not only is that irresponsible, it's a disservice to something that that handled thoughtfully could be very meaningful Mm -hmm. artistically a very good sex scene like like you spoke to that that says something about the character that says something about your relationship with the character and that is well done aesthetically that could be really powerful and really meaningful if it's taken too thoughtfully and and you actually consider as the creator whether or not it should be in there so i think that that's exactly the right point that that you and and this other person who posted on reddit uh kind of alluded to which is like as long as it makes sense that that's a great uh point with that what that person wrote of just like it's the same as any other scene why is the scene here like why does it exist what is the purpose of this scene um so i you know i i, I agree with that my, my little tangent about well like maybe no sex scenes that was just kind of a gut level reaction. But as you were going through um, each one for, say, Dragon Age Inquisition, and like, you're right. Um, uh, um, oh, crap. What the, who were the ones that didn't have it again? That didn't even have a sex scene? Oh, Josephine and Solas. Josephine. It's like, I've romanced Josephine. It's great. I didn't miss mm-hmm. the sex scene at all. It's a great romantic subplot. It's really, it's really interesting, really sweet. And so, like, 
that's that's a really good point. Some should have it if it makes sense. Some shouldn't. It, it the sex scene should not be like a bullet point feature on the back of the box. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it shouldn't be this promise that we're all like, oh, where's the sex scene? Where's the sex scene? That's problematic. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't be good. You know, kind kind of like to your point. Like as long as they're as long as it fits with the character, I like it. Mm-hmm. So it, it like it kind of cheapens sex if you make it a bullet point in a sense. Oh, hugely, yeah, yeah. So I, I, which pretty much I completely agree. I don't really have that much to add to it. I just, hmm. I, I guess I'm also thinking of like I'm sure there's going to be counter arguments of, but what about violence? And like, isn't it weird? Like, you know, we are so used to violence in society versus sex. And like, yeah, but I don't think that means that we should have more gratuitous sex. I think that means we need to have less gratuitous violence. You know, like. <laughs> Like, I don't think one should be as equal to the other. Maybe we should, like, think about maybe bring them both down. And I think kind of Inquisition did that a bit. There isn't, like, a ton of... Which I know some people want that horror element. But, like, they're really... Like, can... So, it, it, let's say I have a child and they're, like, I don't know, 15 years old. And they go, Mom, I want to see this Dragon Age thing that you've been obsessed with since I was a kiddo. And I'm like, well, all right. Like, I would be okay with them playing Inquisition over Origins, because Origin has some pretty fucked up things. Whereas Inquisition, like, as long as I, like, if if I'm really, you know, per, like, overbearing about the nudity stuff, like, you can only romance Josephine or Solas, and it's a girl, and it, if it's a girl, it's related to me to doing Solas anyway, it doesn't really matter. But, like, you know, there's, there's more, I don't know, like, there's, like, I, I, it's not, God, I'm having trouble saying this, but, like, I just... I think Inquisition had the right mix of both sexuality and violence, where it's just enough of, of both to get the point across. And, like, it's it's not too gratuitous on either side. Now, you, you could say that, like, perhaps that makes it a bit boring compared to the others, and I think that's a fair critique. But I, I think that it's enough to make everyone happy, but also be meaningful. So there there could have been more sexual, more sexuality, more violence, but it's I, I think it 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 did really well as is the end. <laughs> so and oh no, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say, and that's why Inquisition is my favorite game. The end. <laughs> uh, um, when you bring up violence, that that is such a broad. It's, it's, it's a much broader topic than just sex. If you if we include sex and violence, there's I have a lot mm-hmm. of thoughts on that because I was actually thinking about this unrelated unrelated to what we were going to talk about, but. Mm-hmm. I guess, in short, I would say a, a naturalistic depiction of violence, to me, in most cases, is better than a non-naturalistic depiction of violence. In other words, unless you are specifically attempting to do something that is maybe like, maybe you're trying to do something that's over the top, but not realistic, because that's a type of style that you're doing. You know, when mm-hmm. the movie came out, um, when uh, Quentin Tarantino brought out Kill Bill, a lot of people made made uh, fuss about the violence but it's horribly unrealistic violence i mean don't get mm-hmm. me wrong there's lots of it right like she cuts apart you know scores of dudes in that one room uh, with a samurai sword but it's hyper unrealistic um so to me it almost seems cartoonish as opposed to mm-hmm. like something that's um uh like really, really naturalistically can be horrifying. You know, uh, countless people get their limbs cut off in Kill Bill Volume 1 in in the showdown at the House of Blue Leaves, and it's like nothing. Uh, whereas in Requiem for a Dream, Joseph Leto's character has his arm... Uh. Sur- he has his arm <laughs> surgically removed in a medical procedure, and I, I it's hard to look at the screen. Do you know what I mean? Like oh, That whole movie was hard to watch. <laughs> compare dozens of people getting limbs chopped off in a violent attack where it's like it happens so mm-hmm. ridiculous that it's hard to even take it seriously versus one guy in a medical procedure getting his arm taken off one of them is far more traumatizing than the other and it's the one that's Mm -hmm. done more naturalistically so even though it might be harder to look at for some reason i just feel like a naturalistic depiction of violence is better than an unnaturalistic one unless you have a good reason stylistically like it's the genre of of thing that you're doing and Mm -hmm. similarly a naturalistic sex scene is better than a, than a non-naturalistic sex scene. Porn kind of has this weird license to show ridiculously unrealistic sex, and it's just, I don't know, that's just part of what you get when you come to porn. But for the most part, in movies, it's like, it's also not that 
not quite that naturalistic. It, it's a bit, well, I guess they're trying to do their best to make it um, quote unquote tasteful, but also dramatic. And it ends up sort of falling into this campy area, I feel, a lot of the time. Um, mm-hmm. Blue is the warmest color got a lot of attention because people thought, wow, this is really, this is really like high on the titillating side. To me, I just thought, well, that just looks very naturalistic. And like I said, I didn't think it was gratuitous. I just thought, well, that just looks like two people that are really into each other having sex. Um, so I don't know. Like, I, I guess to, to compare it to violence, I'm like, look, if the violence is going to be in there, I'd rather have it be realistic violence, which includes, you know, if there's a decapitation, blood spurts. You know, if, if, if somebody hits someone with a sword, like that does a lot of damage, not just like a little nick uh, on the surface. If you're going to show a sex scene... Um, it doesn't have to be prolonged or gratuitous, but I, I would prefer that it, that it, uh, like you said, the, the whole like weird music and people sort of rubbing each other in their underwear. That's just silly. <laughs> well, yeah, I, th- I agree. Th- there's, before we, because we're running short on time, one thing I wanted to talk about, um, was the other post that was, um, Luke, Luke Strain saying that like, he's kind of wishes they'd shy away, like Inquisition shy away from the nudity. And, one thing that bothered well now looking back at it it looks like it's not as bad but like when i was looking at this post before like this guy essentially says that um like he he identifies strongly as a christian and i think he says it at one point like yeah he's he's married and like he that like just because of like his religious background or whatever and it made him comfortable and like he's coming out here for a conversation like i didn't think he was trying to push his beliefs or anything like that and people were just downvoting him a lot and like really like raking him through the coals just because of his like being uncomfortable with sexuality and like for everyone who was like yelling at this poor kid like fuck off <laughs> like I at least reading through the comments originally, like I haven't really had the time to like really sift through it. So maybe there's something that makes him out to be bad or whatever. But at least what I saw, like he was doing fine. He was just saying something. It was just a conversation starter of listen, like I'm not really comfortable with this nudity thing here. Like, do you think like am, am I the only one? Like, do you think so too? What what community? What do you think? He was honestly just asking a question, and people were like, "No, nah, it's fine." And I was like, "No." <laughs> There is Guys. there is so much to that. I'm glad you're breaking it up to defend this person. I know you I know you said we're kind of short on time, but like this particular instance of people like I said rejecting the idea of just a conversation or of being thoughtful. I, I want to see if I can expound on that a little bit. People have really strong reactions to the idea of someone else maybe having hesitancy around something that they don't have hesitancy, particularly when it comes to sex, Mm -hmm. Um, particularly when it comes to a person saying, I would rather um, perhaps abstain more often. I would rather not view material that's sexually explicit. And I think maybe there's a good reason for why I don't want to do that. That might not be true for everyone, but it's not definitely not true for everyone. Right? It might not be true for some other people, and it might be true for, for some people as well. If someone has taken to, to um, viewing material like that thoughtlessly, um, if they've taken to personal choice patterns in their life thoughtlessly, subconsciously they're going to realize that they're being confronted with that and it makes them very uncomfortable doesn't mean they're wrong. They might be doing exactly the right thing for themselves personally. But if they haven't mm-hmm. thought about it carefully, that's going to be uncomfortable. And even worse, if you don't catch that inside of yourself, you're going to react quite hostilely to that person that's sort of inadvertently making you confront this about yourself. Um, like I said, I don't like prudishness. I don't like puritanical thinking because I think it's counterintuitive to to some of our, our natural proclivities uh, as people. Mm-hmm. But I think in American culture, we've gotten it a bit twisted with the puritanical thinking. We've sort of gone overboard on that. That's sort of embedded through through a lot of our history. And so in the modern day, you know, whatever the past 20, 30, 40 years, there's kind of been a counterbalance to that where we've gone uh, more liberal in that sense. But you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater in some sense. Like when some person says... 
well, maybe maybe we should be more careful about the depictions of sex in media. That doesn't necessarily make them prudish if they've been very thoughtful. Basically, I guess what I'm saying is if you're the person who says throw everything in there, don't think about it at all, um, that's probably dumb. And if you're a person who says don't show anything, it's got to be really strict and very everything's got to be 100% G-rated and you're not thinking about why, that's also pretty dumb. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's got to be a lot of thoughtfulness because it's such a complex topic. Um you know, and I'm not qualified to talk about it at, at in the total detail that it requires, but it's definitely mm-hmm. something that should people should be mindful of. And and if we are mindful of it and very careful about the way that we think about it and talk about it, and the artists who are making it are very careful in the way that they think and talk about it, um, I don't think you can go wrong with that. I don't think we'll get ridiculously gratuitous, over-the-top depictions, and I don't think we'll get... Uh, super chaste uh, puritanical view on it. I think we'll get something that's just authentic and thoughtful and and valuable. At least we hope so. <laughs> or someone's but... going to make a bunch of mods with a bunch of dicks in it. I don't know. <laughs> what do I know? Yeah. But like I, I after raking the, all those mods to the like the coals a bit, like I don't mind them either because I think like someone really sat there and was like, "This is something I want, and I'm gonna make it on my own." And like they might have help or whatever, but like I I think that modding has its own I don't want to say morality because that's not quite what I mean, but like has its own. Mm, I respect a lot of modders in a lot of ways because they sat there and for most of them are self-taught and they make what they want. And I think there's something very respectable about doing that. And like, I think, yeah, you know, there are some mods like the, the bio mods we talked about where you have to like think of like, oh, hmm, maybe it's not okay for doing these things. But like, I, I don't know. For some reason, I'm willing to give them a pass just because they sat there and, like, they wanted something so bad that they went out and got it. And, like, there, there, there is no harm in, like, the grander scheme because it's not, like, not everyone's going to get the mod. It's just honestly the people that want it. It's a very small core audience that says, listen, I've, I, I have or I haven't, whatever. It doesn't really matter to me. But for my own personal interests, I want this mod for whatever reason. And, like, I, I think then they go out and seek it. They put it on their game. They have a bunch of fun. Great. That's awesome. But I, I think when you're talking about what that, like, you know, Bioware as a business in the vanilla game, I think that's an entirely different discussion. So I, I guess what I'm trying to get at, the point I'm bringing this up, is that if you're someone who has modded a dick in the game, great, God bless you. I won't download it, but congratulations on the hard work. <laughs> so <laughs> Hard work. Um, <laughs> so, no, I, Got me. I, I do think... I, I do think... Uh, I mean, you make a good, you make a good point. Like, I always <clears> give the the dick modders a hard time, uh, but like nobody's forcing me to use it. That's the beauty of mods. You don't have to use it mm-hmm. if you don't want to. I did try mm-hmm. to use it in the sense that like I I thought the underwear during the romance scenes was stupid, and then I yeah. di- I didn't realize that it was going to be dicks everywhere. So that was I guess my mistake. Maybe I didn't read the description carefully enough. But um, yeah, you're right. That's the beauty of modding is that it's it is meant to be. Um, you know, you pick and choose what you want. You put the mods on that you want. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything else to add on this topic? No, except that it's just, it's such a damn good topic and it's so deep. And if we, if we allowed ourselves to go even further into like the psychology of like our culture, we could probably get lost in the weeds for hours. I just think it's, again, because I can't summarize it in all the ways that I would like to, I would just encourage people to like be very, very thoughtful about this stuff. Video games are are emerging as potentially the best narrative medium that has ever existed. Um, and mm-hmm. having romantic narrative is has become a really important part and that has be it's basically been an important part of our culture and our conceptualization of romance for literally thousands of years. I mean throughout a good portion of human history. Um, do not think of these subjects lightly and, and and try as much as I value aesthetics as how they relate to narrative. And as much as I think, you know, like I said, a naturalistic sex scene is better than an unrealistic one and naturalistic violence is better than unrealistic violence. Like, don't just get stuck on the aesthetics behind it. Um, it's such an important topic. And it, as, as grandiose and self-important as it sounds, like, oh, I play video games and it's this really cool medium. Like, It kind of, it like, it really is. Like, we really have a cool front row seat to how this is happening. And developers at least claim to be listening to us. I mean, that's a Mm -hmm. really, really cool position to be in where there's this emerging art form 
uh, at the same time as their social media and the people who are making this emerging art form at least claim to be listening to us. Um, take to that really carefully. Really think carefully about how stuff like this can be depicted because um, it, it's, it's potentially a, a transformative moment for art. This reminds me... Oh, I can't remember what the guy's name is. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, this is going to be a really bad discussion now that I can't remember the guy's name. But there is this really interesting uh, game maker. He makes very small games. I think, like, they're, like, on the Xbox. Well, I, don't, I don't have an Xbox, but, like, the, the game thing. It has, like, there. It's, it's very, like, small, maybe even free-to-play games. And it's it's very... Uh, I, I think it's only... The, the, the ones I know about are only focused on, like, uh, uh, gay gay men. And um, it's just, like, really strange games. Like, I know um, uh, Geek Remix has done a couple of them where uh, there's this one where, like, you're just a naked dude in a shower and you're showering. And, like, this guy comes up to you and it's like, hey, bro, do you mind washing me? And, like, the game is, like, washing him. And it's, like, this really strange, like, it's it's almost like an intro to a porn. And a lot of his games are like that, where it's almost like this weird, almost uncomfortable, like, um, gay porno, I guess? I don't know how to describe it. But it's, it's I, I think, in a way, that's outside of what we're talking about. Like, it is very gratuitous in what, it's, what it shows sometimes. Um, at least in my memory, I wish I could remember this guy's name, but like the, the, how it's different from like Dragon Age or say like major games is that Dragon Age is so much more than the sex where like those tiny games or maybe even big games if you want to, like it is trying to talk about sex, you know, like there is like, it's trying to talk about like homosexuality and like y y people's confrontation of it and like how they mix with it. Like they're like the art form there is about the sex and therefore it means something like it's, it's a lot more than just the like two guys showering. Ha ha. Like there's, there's a little bit more there. At least I, that's what I've been told. But um, so I, I think that if we were talking about that game versus Inquisition, we would be having like two different conversations. So I'm not really like, from this, I'm not having saying like, oh, we should no dicks at all, whatever. Just saying like, I don't think it belongs in Dragon Age. It belongs in that dude's games and maybe somewhere else, but I don't think Dragon Age is the place to have that conversation. The end. I agree. I agree. And I agree with you that Inquisition is probably handled it the best. <clears throat> so yeah, I concur with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all I had. <laughs> I wish I could remember that guy here. I because I, I feel like it's right. We gotta at least say what that guy's name was. Yeah. Robert Yang. <laughs> That's who it is. <laughs> Robert Yang. What was the name of the yes. title? Uh the one with the shower is specifically called Rinse and Repeat. Everybody's going like, why is Jordan asking for the name of the title? <laughs> <laughs> you know why. Um Ali so I I'm reading a K K <laughs> Kotaku article. I totally missed that. What's the name of the title again? <laughs> Rinse and Repeat. <laughs> That's genius. Oh, come on. He really wanted people to take it seriously as a piece of art. Rinse and repeat. Oh, no, there's a lot of humor in here. Like, the guy, like, is always, like, apparently all of his games have, like, this one guy in it. And he's, all, no matter the situation, he's always wearing sunglasses. Like, this isn't a pretentious thing. It's, like, he, there is a lot of humor gotcha. to it. <laughs> like, I, oh, like, there's a video of it right here that's kind of auto-playing. And it's, like, they're in the shower and, like, things are going well. So there's, like, a disco ball, like, that has come down. Like, it's, there's a lot of humor in it. I'm not trying to like take this up as like a should be in the MoMA work of art, but like it is like it's 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 a conversation that should be had, and it's a lot of humor in it, so it's kind of funny. Um, Things but are yeah, always which going I, don't, well. I don't know if like the dick in it because there's like a picture of like the dick, and it's 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 blurred, and I don't know if that's because it's the Kotaku article 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 or that's what it is in the game. So I don't know. I don't play these games. I don't know that much about it. I have just vaguely heard it and I thought it would be a good topic. If I was better at preparing things, I would have researched this more, but that's what it is. Anyway, I think that's all we have for today, right? Yeah, I think I think uh, I think we've covered this topic about as well as we're going to get to cover it today. Who knows, maybe if something um if this topic becomes front and center as a result of something that's in one of the new games, right? Like if this comes up again, mm -hmm. I imagine we might revisit the topic if Dragon Age 4 or I don't think Anthem's going to have this issue, but maybe if Dragon Age 4 brings up this topic again, we'll revisit it. What if Anthem just turns out to a poor game? 
What if? Like, <laughs> just a bunch of sex. <laughs> Micro, are, you, are you saying microtransaction sex scenes? Is this what it <laughs> Oh, my God. Jordan, that's genius. <laughs> Uh, no, but don't. But that's the only microtransaction in the game, and like the profits will just go through the roof. Everything else is no microtransactions except the sex scenes, and I guarantee you, like the most profitable game of all time. Oh my god, Jordan, you're not wrong. That oh wow. Okay, see for you guys, there's going to be like a skip in ones. I don't know which episode's coming out first or last, but we're having to have this discussion in a few more minutes. Free for nothing, yay! Send me the check. <laughs> Anyway, oh, we forgot to say, we're on iTunes now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Jordan was was brilliant. So I, for people who don't know how to get on iTunes, you have to set up an RSS feed. And for and like, you have to actually like, iTunes doesn't host anything. It's just like a search engine, essentially. Mm-hmm. So if you want to have your podcast in there, you have to, what you had to do was like pay for hosting. And then like, there's also like this weird like, you have to make sure you get enough, like, upload speeds and download speeds and whatever. Like, it was a very complicated issue. And Jordan found this app that lets you do it for free. Uh, we're not sponsored by them or anything. But, like, we – but before, we were, like, sitting there, like, calculating, like, how much money is this iTunes thing's going to be? Like, I have a Patreon now, so I could donate to, like, that. But, like, Jordan's like, I got it. He figured it all out for free. So that's why we're on iTunes now. Just look up Split the Veil. Please like or review a comment. I don't know what they... Does reviewing a comment or leaving a comment and reviewed, like, do anything other than, like, iTunes promoting you? No, I think it does something as far as, like, it pushes you further up the list, especially in your category, and it might put you in more Mm -hmm. people's recommendations in that category. So it is helpful if people can leave reviews on iTunes. That's always nice. And um, anchor.fm is the name of the site slash app that we're using for Mm -hmm. hosting. You can also listen to it on there. I quite like the most mobile app for anchor i don't like the apple podcast app anymore through several updates i feel like the ui has just gotten worse and worse so just as a thing on android and apple um it's from i to me i find the interface a little bit nicer if you download anchor yeah i'm still because i got a iphone i'm just like attached to the stupid podcast app or whatever so i haven't actually tried it out yet but so like i don't i don't know what their reviews do but like Tell us what you think. You could put under anonymous, I think. I don't know. I don't know much about iTunes, guys. I'm not that tech savvy. Point is, we're on there. So if you don't, uh, I I think for the most part, we're going to stop the Google Drive thing. Or did you want to continue doing that? No, I think we can probably cut off the Google Drive. They'll be, like I said, they can get it from Anchor. They can get it from iTunes. They'll be able to get audio only versions a couple places. Yeah, so we're so we're gonna switch over from the Google Drive. We're going to go over to iTunes now. If if that's a problem, I'm sorry, but we were already pretty bad about keeping up with the Google Drive. <laughs> this is just easier for us. Uh, and then we'll always be uh, you, this. The show will always be on either my channel, which is at Elder Thon on YouTube. You, I'm also have a Twitter at Elder Thon on Twitter, um, or you can find me on Reddit at Gillanon. And then, Jordan, where can they find you? And, of course, they can also find me on YouTube under The Exalted March. They can find me on Twitter at The Exalted March. They can find me on Instagram. I don't know if I ever mentioned that in one of the you other episodes. You have Instagram? Yeah, I have an Instagram now for uh, at the for the Exalted March. And it's basically just going to be, like, screenshots because I've got a cool way now. I'll just put my screenshots onto a Dropbox and then on my phone I'll post from there so i have a lot of screenshots of inquisition and andromeda so i'm like i'll just occasionally post some screenshots on instagram um okay there's not a lot of people doing that on instagram but there's like a small little community of dragon age people more than than mass effect Mm -hmm. so i'm like hey you know maybe there's a there's a a gap to be filled there for mass effect screenshots on instagram uh so mainly screenshots and occasionally i might post um uh how do the kids say it spicy memes is that the right term (laughs) We have to ask Jack. He, like, he loves the word memes. He says it all the time. So uh, I'll, I'll post. I'll post some dank memes, as the kids say. Um, Get those lit may mays. Yes, it will be especially lit. And um, we're not even that old, Jordan. No, yes, we are, because nobody says crunk anymore, and I didn't realize that until like three years ago. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I'm on, I'm on Instagram and also most importantly I'm on fanfiction.net uh, under the Exalted March uh, this fan, Mass Effect Andromeda fanfiction that I created is called The Odyssey to Mile 2 a Mass Effect story the prologue and the first two chapters are up and uh, I'll also tweet out whenever I put up a new chapter so if anybody 
I've gotten a couple of reviews, a couple of uh, comments on the Andromeda specific subreddit, which is also where I posted it. You know, so I'm always open to feedback if you like it or if you'd like to see it improve in some way. Let me know. Cool. And I think with that, guys, Dares Sheral. <laughs>